everyone, this is Sasha bringing you a video tutorial today from BP for You, and today we're going to be talking about our text. And so I have this box here, and to find that, I just went up here to Window, and I have my character box selected, and this is what this is. And if you want the paragraph box, then you can go up to Window and Paragraph. Mine are embedded in the same window, but if yours are not, then you can just go ahead and you can drag that into that box, and that will embed them together. Okay, so um, writing on an image, it sounds super easy, right? Well, there can be a lot to it. So let's get started. So here is my text um, tool right here, and I can, press, can, I can press T on my keyboard, and that will bring this up as well. Over here, I can go ahead and I can select what text that I want. And so let's go ahead and make something like this. Now I could also have done that from right here. Um, I can select my size. Um, I can select my spacings. Like if your letters are too far apart, then you can shrink them together using this. And I have found myself having to use that more than once because for some reason my letters got really spaced apart and it looked like I had put, um, like when I was trying to do a watermark for myself, it looked like I had put S space, A space, S space, as opposed to just the S, A, S. And so it was really helpful to know that I could use that to shrink my text and squish it together a little bit. And so here we can change the language, but I'm not going to do that. You can make it sharp, crisp, strong, or smooth. By default, it's on sharp. You can choose your capitalization here. Um, you can use the small caps or all large caps, or you can turn all that stuff off and let the text itself decide. Um, here you can make it bold or italic. You can do um, superscript and subscript, underline, strike through. So let's go ahead and let's see what this text looks like. And we're just going to write just something simple. OK, so here also we have our paragraph, too. If you were writing a lot, then you would probably want to use this paragraph. This would be great for if you were designing PDFs or um, Something where you were doing a lot. Maybe if you were writing a poem on this photo, something like that. So let's go ahead and we're going to double click on this layer. And we can add some of these layer styles. So we can give it a nice drop shadow. We could give it an inner glow or an outer glow. Um, we could bevel or emboss it. So let's go ahead and we're going to keep um, those settings on here and we're just we're going to click OK. So one of the questions that people ask oftentimes is what is the difference between opacity and fill? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at this. They both, by the way, typically do the same thing. For example, if I were to Let's not use that. If I were to add this photo filter and pull that up, if I lower the opacity to 50%, it's going to look the same as if I lower my fill to 50%. Um, both control the layer's transparency. Let's go ahead and we will keep this and we will lower the opacity to about 50%. Okay, so if you haven't added any layer styles to your photo, a stroke, a drop shadow, a bevel, emboss, or an outer glow, you're going to get the same result with both. We have added something to this, um, to this here. So let's go ahead and if we lower this to 50%, you can see how it kind of fades. So now we're going to lower our fill to 50%. And you can see how it kind of keeps that um, 
keeps that little bit of a look to it. And if we lower that all the way down to zero, now we kind of have this cool little, um, almost like little bubbles over top of the picture. And so that is the difference between opacity and fill. And so that's something that you can keep in mind with your text um, or anything else that you would use an effect on. So if we come up here, we can warp the text as well. So we can give it an arc or we can arc it lower or upper. And here we have all these different um, little tricks here that we can use to sort of make the text look a little bit fun. And I kind of like these waves because it goes really well with the beach. Or we can make it look like a fish. We can make it rise. We can do it fish eye. We can inflate it. We can squeeze it. And lastly, we can twist it. So let's go ahead and we're gonna pick one. Let's do this one. So here we can choose our blend and how much of this effect that we're having. We have our distortion here and you can kind of pick how you want that to look and your vertical distortion is here. So we can sort of go through and we can set this um, where we think it should go. I kind of like it here at zero. And if we wanted it to go the opposite way, then we could just pull it the opposite way. I like it better this way. I think I'm going to leave it right about here. Maybe right there. Perfect. Okay, so those are the settings that I want to use. Um, you could make that horizontal too, but or vertical as well, but obviously that's not working for our picture. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click OK. And so now there's another um, little fun thing that I could do with my text. And so here I have, you know, the before and the after on that. I was able to go through and I added those effects, that drop shadow, the outer glow, the bevel and emboss. And because I used those effects, I was able to turn the fill off and I was able to kind of get this really fun bubbly effect. And then I came up here and I was able to warp my text in order to get it to a really fun kind of creative looking um, sort of font and here I can change my font again and this I can't do anything with for this specific text so I don't have to even worry about that I can change my size and then I can change the spacing between the letters and how big how tall they are or how um, short that they are another thing I can do is I can hit control T on my keyboard if I hold down my shift key I can constrain my proportions as I move this bigger or smaller. And when I'm happy with it, I can just press enter on my keyboard. And so that's another um, option that you have. If you don't like its location, you can grab this move tool here and you can move that anywhere you want to across the picture. Um, again, if you hold down control T and you move your cursor to the outside, you can see that there's kind of this arched arrow. I can use that to sort of twist this um, however that I want to if I wanted it to not be so perfectly straight as I moved that. And if I was happy with it um, how I wanted it then I could go ahead and I could hit enter on my keyboard and that will go ahead and place that down again for me. So there's just a little bit of a fun tip for you um, for creating text over top of your photos. So thank you so much for watching this video tutorial. Happy editing!